Hi again, folks. Let me share a few more thoughts about what consultative selling is. And this triangle is helpful to me. Um, and, and it basically says that transactional selling is sort of on the bottom of this pyramid and consultative selling is on the top of the pyramid. And in transactional selling, you know, you, when, when somebody walks into your shoe store, to take that sort of silly example, um, there's you and your needs and the customer and their needs. And they don't overlap a lot. You know, you want them to walk out with as many dollars of shoes <laughs> as possible, right? Um, and that's, that's a transaction. Your needs are really not that overlapping or not that shared. As you go up the pyramid of towards consultative selling, those needs begin to overlap. And you become, this is what it means to be a consultant. When you, when you are a consultant to somebody, you are sharing their needs. And, and, and you, you might be surprised to find when you have that trusting relationship, they are actually interested in your needs. The customer or client in consulting language becomes interested really in helping you succeed. So it's like a marriage rather than a one night stand, right? A date. You go from dating to marriage as you go up that pyramid. That's one way, one way to look at it. And, and there's, there's a thing about anxiety. You know, a lot of us, when we think about selling, we become anxious immediately. And it's probably because we've had bad experiences with salespeople who made us anxious, right? You know, the classic insurance salesman who gets his foot in the door and won't take it out. Um, that, that is a, a sure sign of not having established that consultative relationship, of that being a transactional relationship with different needs. At the bottom of the pyramid, there's much more anxiety, and it's why we're anxious about selling. At the top of the pyramid, there's this sort of natural marriage relationship where you and the client are thinking together, not thinking alone, right? Solving problems together. You become part of the problem-solving process for your client. So there's less anxiety. And the higher you go on that consultative relationship, the higher the value, service, product you tend to sell. If you are going to be the major software provider for a corporation, and you may sell them you know, a contract uh, for providing software that's a million dollars a year. It's not unusual, right? I sold million dollar consulting contracts for major corporations. And if you, if you do that, you know, that's high value and it tends to be over a longer period of time, right? And I'd like you to think about your own motivation. And I, I've done this thing when I, when I was about to meet with a potential client I, and this may sound funny to some of you, but, but I would meditate for a moment. And I would ask myself, what, what is my own motivation? As I go in to meet with this guy, what is foremost in my mind? And I would condition myself. I would sort of train myself. And I would tell myself to approach this client in the spirit of service. Not in the spirit of getting, but in the spirit of giving thinking about how am I going to help meet that client's needs? How am I going to make them successful? And I think people can sense, I think people have sort of a radar, if you will, where they can sense what your motivation is. And they can sense when your motivation is sincerely to help them, not to help you. So think about that, the spirit of service, if you will, as you go to meet with a meet with a client. And I think that spirit of service helps you build that trusting relationship. And as you do that, I think you both build your own brand equity. And we're going to talk about your own brand and brand equity more. And social capital. The value of relationships is your social capital. And your social capital is the sum of your relationships. If you are a consultative seller, you'll build that. And that's what really gets you to the top of an organization. Let me just kind of summarize what I think consultative selling is. And it's first, as we've talked about, developing that relationship of trust. And they will trust you, not just if you're approaching them in the spirit of service, but in fact, if you are competent, and I uh, will talk more about this because it's absolutely critical to building your brand, you have to in fact be competent in your area of expertise, and you have to be able to demonstrate that competence to them. It's a passionate, focus on the customer's needs, not just your needs. 
and if you're passionately focused on somebody else's needs, you have to be a great listener. We're going to talk about listening skills. You have to be a deep listener, really thinking about the meaning behind what somebody is saying. There's always the surface of what somebody's saying, and there's always what's going on behind there. And another way to think about consultative selling is to think about it as shared problem solving. We'll talk more as we talk about the process. And, and I want you to think about your ability to sit with a client and not be thinking about what you're going to sell them, but be thinking about the process of problem solving with them. The moment they think you're really helping them solve problems, you're in the door. You're, you're on your way to that relationship. So that's my definition of consultative selling. Let's now look at the curriculum of the course and, and how we're going to get there.